Hello and welcome to Mr. E's Watch Reviews. Uh, today we're going to be talking about not really just a specific watch or anything like that. Uh, I just want to talk to you guys about a couple of different things that are going on, you know, in the watch world. Uh, I'd kind of like to get, you know, y'all's thoughts and opinions down in the comments and whatnot. Um, basically, you know, Rolex is rolling out with their certified pre-owned program. And I think that's actually really awesome because, you know, I wouldn't mind owning a really nice vintage piece or whatever, uh, especially something that was in good condition or that I could wear and, you know, would actually function correctly. Um, you know, and when I mean function correctly, I mean, you know, do everything that I really wanted to do, you know, stay up, um, you know, good loom, nice, decent bracelet, that kind of thing. Um, but that kind of go comes to what I, uh, my point of all of this, um, my coworker, Tom, I think said it best is that old watches were really shitty. I know a lot of y'all going to freak out when I say that, but, and I mean, even the Rolexes, uh, like every really old Rolex that I see and I get to check out that has been worn and all that kind of stuff. When I see them, I'm like, ah, really, really? I mean, how the hell did this ever, you know, get to the value that they say it's worth? Like, I just, I don't see it. Um, and even like with like these little time axes and stuff, I know they're not really super valuable and whatnot, you know, and, uh, like again, this one's, you know, pretty rare, I guess, but, um, they're just not very valuable or whatever. But like, I look at these bracelets like from the seventies here and I'm just like, man, this looks like some costume jewelry junk bullshit. And I know it's it's Timex. You know, these are not like super expensive watches even for back then. Um, you know, they were just known for being reliable and tough and everything like that, uh, which they are. Um, and same thing with like the Rolex and all that kind of thing. But like when it just, you, you got to kind of put everything in perspective when you look at stuff. And like, even when you're looking at things like from, you know, way back in the day or like watching a movie from, you know, 50, 60 years ago, when you hear some shit that makes you go, Ooh, what the fuck did he just say? Or wh what was that dog's name? You know, kind of thing. And it's like, you know, you just got to take it for what it is. It's just, that's the way it was back then. Um, you know, and like, I, I don't know. I, I do really like, vintage stuff because i really enjoy history like i love learning history i love you know uh going and checking out stuff because like especially here where i live you know and have have lived my pretty much my whole life in the state of virginia and now in north carolina um there's history shit all around me and like you guys over in europe and stuff y'all should really know what i'm talking about y'all are living in some cities that are like fucking a thousand years old you know but built by the druids and you know what I'm saying celtic you know peoples and all that kind of stuff um you know i mean there's castles and all kinds of i mean you guys hear what i'm saying it just you know actually i don't even know where the fuck i was going with all that hell i don't know what i was saying now son of a bitch i don't know but basically back to my point um you know vintage stuff and whatnot when you compare it to like stuff of today and like that, that's my whole problem. Like I got to see and really didn't get interested in watches or even Rolexes or anything like that until about a year ago. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I wouldn't have been able to pick one out of a lineup. If it didn't say Rolex on it, I wouldn't have been able to like, Oh yeah, that one's this. I couldn't tell you none of them. I didn't know none of their names, not a single mate, not a model. I didn't even know what one of them looked like. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't really care. Um, so with that being said, when I went down 
uh, to the actual AD and they didn't have anything there, you know, asked around a couple of places and they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, go to this place and go to that place. And they were both great dealers uh, where I got a crash course in um, specifically the Submariner and uh, the GMT watches. Uh, then I started watching shit like Antiques Roadshow and stuff like that. Uh, little episodes here and there. And, you know, of course, I've seen where these guys bought watches 30 years ago and they're worth fucking, you know, $100,000 or, you know, $50,000 where they paid 300 bucks for it. And I'm like, hell yeah, that sounds like my kind of an investment. Plus, I get to wear it. So, you know, that, that's what got the whole ball rolling. But anyway, back to my point. Um, uh, you know, when I went in there and I'm, I'm looking at the watches and they're telling me the prices and whatnot. And I'm like, man, look, I'm trying to spend more like this kind of money. So they took me over to the watches, you know, older vintage watches that didn't have boxes and papers and all this other stuff. And I started looking at them and I'm like, you know, after I'd already looked at the newer model stuff and whatnot, and I'm like, yeah, this, this is not what I got in my mind for six or $7,000. Uh, you know, stamp clasp and hollow links and, you know, it just didn't feel good. The fact that this had Rolex on it, I mean, Lord, I would have almost swore that I was looking at fake watches. Um, you know, and I know some of y'all are like, oh, well, they couldn't have been very good, high quality. Man, yeah, that's that's the problem, dude. And I mean, I've seen really good, you know, fakes and I've seen the newer models first. So all the older stuff is just like, I don't know. It just seems ragged to me. You know, like I said, the, the bracelets have bad gaps and I mean, it's not just them. It's, it's a lot of the vintage watches, you know, saying, but they just didn't have the tight ass tolerances like they do today, especially on the bracelets, you know, and it wasn't uncommon to see, you know, uh, like not a class that looks like this, but you know, something more similar to that. Uh, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but hell, that Invicta clasp ain't too far off of what the hell you would see on, you know, the damn Rolex. I mean, it, it looked different. Matter of fact, hold on. Why am I fucking around? I have one. I mean, you see what I'm saying? This, this is not fucking super high end shit. You know, and this one actually has decent, decent shit still to it. You know what I mean? It's not completely fucking destroyed. But, yeah. You know, I mean, it's... Eh. Eh. You know what I mean? Eh. You know. And again, that one I got out of a, a grab bag. I'm not 100% positive that one is genuine or not. Uh, it looks like it. It looks like it's got all the right markings and everything like that. But um, either way, it, it looks exactly like that. You know what I'm saying? It, whether it's real or not, that's exactly what it looks like on the older vintage stuff. And that's not the only class they had. They had smoother buckles and stuff like that on some of them. But... Uh, you know, it just, it's not, it's not the high end quality stuff, you know, that you see today. And, you know, uh, so like, I, I get it. It's built off the reputation It's built that these watches lasted and ran forever. And that the mechanical mechanisms inside of them, uh, are built, you know, like tanks, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they're just, they're really, you know, badass movements, uh, but you know, and and it all it all this kind of goes back to also like the value in these watches. Um, like I get it that okay, it's old. There may not be that many of them left because the other ones got broken. This and that and whatever, and you know, or well, there weren't that many of them produced in the first place. But you know, you have all this money. And this tiny little item, you know, and the fact that it's old does add value. I mean, it really does because something that's 100 years old, I mean, 
it's amazing that something would survive that long. Um, you know, but <laughs> like I said, I've seen a lot of these vintage watches, you know what I'm saying, that they show their age and those are the ones that go for the biggest money. And like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, God, that thing looks ragged, you know? And so I, I don't know. Like I said, I know a lot of you guys are real hardcore watch enthusiasts. Y'all are going to probably want to rip me a new butthole, but like, I get it. I wouldn't change the dial because I know that fucks with the value and I'm all about the value. You know, I'm, you know, I want that dollar just as bad as the rest of y'all. Uh, but like I said, I just, I don't, I don't understand how these things are commanding the prices that they're commanding. You know what I mean? It just, you know, Okay, somebody famous for it. Okay, I see how that could add value, you know, this and that. But the newer watches are so much better. You know what I mean? Like, you know, other than the Submariner going up to the 41 millimeter case, uh, I really wish it was still the 40 or even maybe a 39 millimeter case. Uh, that would be much better, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, just like I like the aluminum bezel. Like, like how this has got. I like that. But you see them scratches? You know, that's that's the kind of shit you're going to get with an older one. You know what I'm saying? It, it, hell, I've seen several of the older ones where the damn paint's all gone and everything. They're like, oh, this is awesome. It's very patinaed. I'm sorry, man, but if it's going to cost me $10,000, I want it to look brand new. Fuck that patina. To me, like that's the same thing as when the guys do the whole hot rod thing and clear coat over top of the rust. Yeah, I wish y'all could see my face right now. Because it's, yeah. You know, I get it. It is kind of a cool look. And I get it that that kind of shit has, you know, it takes a lot of time. And, you know, with other antiques and whatnot, why the patina is so important because it helps show its age. But yeah, you know, I, I don't know. It, it just, I don't like it. Like I, I, like, I really like the faux patina on stuff. You know, I, I like, uh, I like the, I like the looks of a lot of old vintage watches. But man, I'm just not impressed with, like, like I said, how bad the links are stretched out, or you know, the way the the end links are and the bracelets and the this and the that. And, you know, I, I know y'all are like, well, it's old motherfucker. I mean, what do you expect? It's old. I don't know. That, like I said, it's just, this, this is where my struggle is. You guys, you know, because I, I, I'm kind of kicking myself in the ass. Like this time last year, I could have got a Submariner for about $7,000. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but it was like a 1986 or 88. And it was in bad shape. You know what I'm saying? It, it, like, this was after they had serviced it and everything like that. And the bracelet still had a lot of slack. You know, like, it drooped bad. Um, you know, they were going to give me a two-year warranty on it and everything like that. And I would have been able to been wearing me a Rolex right out the gate. And, you know... All that good stuff, but like I said, what once I learned about all the different little mechanisms and stuff like the glide lock and you know the mill clasp and all that on the newer one, I man, I just really wasn't interested in that one. And I mean, that shifted to you know the price range from seven, eight thousand, maybe nine thousand to fucking twelve, fifteen thousand, and it was like, oh my god. And the whole idea of even spending seven thousand dollars on a watch to me then was just insane. But I was just looking at it again with the knowledge of, hey, this could probably be worth a whole bunch of money down the road. I'm kind of glad I didn't go get that older one, just because, like I said, it didn't have boxing papers and stuff like that. Uh, you know, it is through a reputable gray dealer and all that good stuff. But, um, you know just to spend all that kind of money and everything like that. And then later on down the road, uh, after having worn it a little while or whatever, not be able to get that same kind of money back out of it would have been concerning to me. I know a lot of you guys are like, 
Man, you could have definitely got your money back out of that. Yeah, I don't know. Like right now on the dip, right this second, you know what I mean? That year range Submariner, I mean, it's going for a right good chunk, especially in comparison to what it originally sold for. But yeah, I think I'd have been kind of closer to that top end of the price range on it. Um, and again, it's hard for me to just to describe all this to you because, you know, uh, I don't have any of those watches in front of me or anything like that. They were all at different gray dealers or two different gray dealers. Um, but, you know, like there was a couple of two tones and stuff. And, you know, there are several watches that have uh, I've had the opportunity to buy that I really wish I had. Because, again, like there was a two tone blue one um last year that i could have got for like eight grand and i think it was like a mid 90s one and i probably should have jumped on that one that one was gorgeous uh i really do like the blues it's it's it is one of my or if not my absolute favorite uh rolex submariner is the bluesy um it just it's so gorgeous you know, I just, I love that blue and the gold and the two-tone, just, it's sexy. Um, you know, it, it, if, if I could go down there and just pick out any of them, like, just walk in there and not have to worry about the money or anything, that would be the one I would grab, would be the blue and gold two-tone. Uh, the second would probably be the black and gold two-tone. And then, then the actual just black Submariner like my Kronos that I'm wearing right now. Uh, but I really, I do like this. Like this, this is, this would be like, if I could go in and get two, I would get this one for my everyday work watch. And then I would get the blue and gold two-tone. And if I really had my choice, I would get the Smurf configuration of the blue on blue, but in stainless steel. Um, I would love to have it in 18 karat gold, but A, that's going to weigh a shit ton. And B, uh, you know, y'all know what kind of shit I do, whatever. So I would be tearing that gold watch up. And every time you scratch that bitch, you done took gold out of it. So, oh, hell no. I couldn't be doing that. Even a little light scratches, buddy. I'd be trying to dust up after that. I, you know, constantly walking around like a little gold collector around my wrist. Um, But I don't know. Like... Like I said, I'm, I'm sorry. These are the only really kind of old, old watches that I have laying around. Um, I do got my great grandfather's uh, pocket watch, but you know that that's that was a little different because it's from way back in the day, like the early 1900s, and you know it's not the fanciest pocket watch in the world, but it is very ornate, and uh, you can tell it was made by craftsmen. Um, yeah, and the same thing with like the the Rolexes. You you open up the backs of them, you can definitely tell who designed and built all that. Those are craftsmen. Uh, you know, like the bracelets and stuff like that. I'm sure they were probably, especially back then, we're just thinking, you know, it'll last a while and then we can replace it. You know, it, it that, that that's an easy thing to do, but replacing the the moving movement and the moving parts, that's hard. So you know. I don't know. And again, it just may have been the best they could do right then. You know, it is what it is. Um, on my next video, I will be doing a state of the collection video. Um, that's if some of these watches I got coming don't come in first. Um, I got two more Sam Martin watches. And then I've also got a sneaky little surprise. The channel is getting its first loaner watch from a big company. Well, we're not going to say a big company. They're a big company to me, but, you know, it's just two guys. So, at any rate, um, we'll just give you all a sneak peek of the collection here. So, we got one there, there. Got that one there. 
Um, let's see. And that one there is, I was going to actually use this one for parts. Um, I stole a bracelet off of it and I was going to put that on my damn Seiko. That ain't happen. So here's just the top of the one box. Bottom drawer. Other drawer. Ah, oh, bless me. And then, well, I don't feel like lifting this up, but this one is also full up top. And damn, I think I, I think I got a couple. Um, I got, I got, got more watches in here and over there, you know. So we'll gather them all up and get it all assorted nice. I'm clean up my my work area here. I've been doing a lot of stuff lately, you know. But I don't know. Uh, you guys tell me what you guys think about like the whole vintage thing and whatnot. Like, you know. If Rolex is selling these certified pre-owned watches, you know, if they're, say, you know, uh, within a thousand dollars of, you know, the suggested retail price of the new one, uh, would you go that way and maybe save a little bit of money and, you know, have basically a brand new vintage Rolex? Uh, or would you rather... And they're not, they're not all guaranteed to be like vintage, vintage, because, you know, the watch has to be at least three years old before they'll buy it back. Um, but, you know, if that's the case, you know, why wouldn't you just wait for the new one? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm just, I'm just real curious. Are, are the vintage pieces going to be more expensive than the new pieces? Uh, you know, how's this going to work out like that? If that's the case, um, because, you know, other than like a 40 mil ceramic with glide lock, Submariner, I mean, I would pay the 10, five that they're asking for the new one all day long for that. Hell, that's the one I really, really want. So I'd even maybe go up to 11,000, but do I want to pay way more than that? Like they're selling for in the gray market. no, no, I do not. Because if I did, I would have already gone out and bought one on the fucking gray market. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, it just, to me, if you, like, if you so choose and you have the means to do so, to pay way over retail for, for a watch or what the watch originally cost and stuff, more power to you. I really wish I could. I can't. I cannot. I can't even rationalize that. Not even slightly, not even if like, maybe if I had a magic genie that was able to come down and be like, Hey Ed, it's okay to pay $20,000 for that $10,000 watch because fucking three months from now, six months from now, it's going to be worth $60,000 and somebody will buy it from you in a heartbeat. That'd be great. You know, I know a lot of y'all were able to capitalize and do stuff with, you know, Rolexes and flipping and all that other kind of stuff here lately, you know, that, and I'm not saying my, my regular viewers, I'm just talking about just everybody out there in the world. Uh, because like my regular viewers, I, I know a lot of y'all and I know that ain't, y'all ain't that kind of people's, um, you know, and I, again, I'm not saying I'm not hating on anybody that's able to uh, foresee and make the money and all that kind of stuff also, but, um, yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I just, it's like all these people that are out there buying cars and buying these used cars. Like, shit with 150,000 miles paying 20 grand for it. Hell no. Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. You know, and like, again, that's just to help put it in perspective for y'all. I just bought another truck. Okay. I got the truck for $900. And I know y'all are like, oh, Ed, you're a mechanic. You know, you can buy them and fix them up. I had to wash this bitch. That's all I really needed. This truck had just been sitting. It was rich people that just didn't feel like fucking with it no more. You know, it was costing them more in insurance and having to drag it, you know, up to the damn shop and get inspected once a year than it was just to uh, go ahead and sell it. They sold me the truck and a 14 foot by 8 foot trailer big enough to haul a car. 
for another hundred dollars. It was a thousand dollars total for everything. Um, my Mountaineer that I drive, I paid nine hundred dollars for it two years ago. The girl, uh, my girlfriend's car, Pontiac Vibe, bought it like six, seven years ago for nine hundred dollars. Um, you know, my '78 Chevy Stepside pickup. That's probably one of the most expensive vehicles I own right now. Um, just because I paid, uh, $2,400 for that back in 1998. So I've had that truck a real long time, but I mean, $2,400 in 1998 was a lot of money. Uh, shit, bad Smurfette behind me. The initial purchase price for that was only $300. Um, poor thing hadn't run in six years. Uh, now she's probably like, bitch, I wish somebody would part me again for six years the way I drive it. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and even so, like, so, I mean, like, you guys can kind of get it. Like, that's like, what, one, two, three, four, five, like six vehicles. And you know what I'm saying? I didn't spend that much money on none of them. All right. Then you got my boat and its trailer. I only paid eighty seven hundred for that. And that's a twenty one foot boat with a cabin. You know, you can go out on weekend in in this bitch. So I mean, you guys get what I'm saying? Like this is just insane to me. You know, you're talking about. Uh, I mean, if you total all that up together, like, like okay, oh no, oh shit, I totally forgot. I got another truck. I got an F-150 that I bought from my nephew sitting out my driveway. I paid $250 for it. Now, I'm not talking about total money I have maybe tied up in these things with having to fix stuff and whatnot, but I'm just talking about the initial purchase price. So, you know, let's see. We'll go a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. So that's three grand. Five or 5,500 for the truck in the back. And that one there. So let's say I got six thousand dollars total in vehicles that I done paid, and then eighty seven hundred. So was that fourteen? I got less than fifteen grand, and I'm talking about fucking one, two, three, four, five, six, six vehicles, a boat, and two trailers. For $15,000 versus one fucking watch. Yeah, you guys see why, you know, like this has been kind of hard for me and more or less why I wound up going down the homage path. Because I'm going to be honest. That feels fucking really good. You know, and so do all my other homages. I'm not saying that they absolutely 100% feel just as good as that Rolex, but guess what? Out of the Rolexes I put on my wrist, they didn't feel that fucking special. They just felt like a watch. So, I don't know. In summation and in closing, um, do I like vintage stuff? Absolutely. I love the history behind it. Do I think it commands or should command the prices it does? Maybe for historical reasons, but not for necessarily uh, for it to be a great watch to wear today. And again, collectors, I totally understand it. I totally get it. You know, you got to have all of them. You know, it's like Pokemon. You got to collect them all. I, I, I mean, I understand, you know, and there's certain years and, makes and models that people really like about that. Like I really like the mill sub other than the fact that it doesn't come on an actual metal bracelet. It comes on a NATO strap. Um, but I like the hands. I like the dial. I like, you know, I like the bezel. I just, I like the way it looks, you know, because obviously I've never got to touch one or even see one in person and probably never will. You know, I've only seen it in pictures, but to me, that's the way the, the, the Submariner should just be. Uh, and hence why I really love 
this watch the most out of all my watches. I, this is the one I absolutely cherish the most. And, you know, uh, it's probably the one that if, if I don't never, ever, ever get a real, you know, Rolex, it'll be fine with me. Because like I said, this one here checks every last box that I have. It's got the ceramic bezel. It's got the small case, no drill lug holes, awesome glide lock, milled clasp. Yeah. You know, uh, hopefully I will have my surprise from, you know, uh, by Monday or Tuesday. So you guys, please like subscribe. Tell me your thoughts down below. I'll check y'all later. Bye.